Hi, I'm Dennis Phillips, and welcome to Everyday Reloading and Shooting. There's a link in the description below to a video where we ran a test using 140 grain Sierra Match King bullets in our 6.5 Creedmoor using H4350 powder and we ran loads from 39.3 grains to 40.7. We found very good results at the 40.3 and 40.7 with the 40.7 being the best. And so we had groups at an overall spread of the 0.44 inches. So that's the load that we're going to go with. And now we're going to work on seating depth. This is a picture of your rifle chamber. This is the case. Here's the bullet, the projectile that sits in the case. And where the bullet sits, there's going to be a straight area here between the case mouth and where the rifling begins. One of the things that affects accuracy is the distance from the ogive to the lens. The ogive on your bullet is this curved edge of the bullet from where it first starts to curve and onto the tip of the bullet. And then here is where the ogive begins and we want to measure the distance which is X here, the distance between where the ogive begins and where the lands begin, as illustrated on this drawing. The overall length of the bullet is going to be irrelevant because these bullets are going to be different lengths. And I can prove that right here. I'll turn on my caliper. It's zeroed. And I'll take a bullet. And I'll measure it, and that gives me 1.306 and a half. Here's another one, 1 1.308, 1.305 1 and a half. 1.312. So there's a difference of six thousandths. So if you're measuring the overall length from the tip to the cartridge base to the cartridge head, that's going to be irrelevant because the bullet lengths are going to be different. So what we want to measure is the distance from where the ogive begins to where the lands begin. And it doesn't matter about the overall length of the bullet. That's irrelevant. And that's what we call jump, is that distance here. How far does the bullet have to jump before it starts traveling down the barrel? So now what we want to do is we want to adjust the seating depth to see if we can get those groups even tighter. We have the Hornady comparator set. And this has bushings for a number of different rifle calibers. But I have set the bushing for the 6.5 Creedmoor onto the caliper. And so what we'll do is we will measure the inside of that chamber. And then we'll measure the cartridge base to ogive with this tool. So what we'll do here is we're going to loosen this rod. Let this bullet fall down inside of the case like that. We insert the case into the rifle. And we push that all the way in until we feel the shoulder touching the inside of the chamber. Then we take this rod, we gently push it forward until that bullet just contacts the rifling. We lock it down, 
and it's kind of loose in there, so I use a cleaning rod to push that out. Otherwise, the bullet will stick to the rifling on the inside. So this is the total length of the cartridge base to where the ogive meets the rifling. We place that in our caliper. And it gives us a measurement of 2.305. I'm going to back off just a little bit off of that. And I'm going to go with 2.30 because there's a little bit of variation from one bullet to the next. So to be on the safe side, we're going to assume that 2.30 is where the uh, ogive meets the rifling and we're going to set our bullet depth accordingly okay so with the comparator set we determined that from the cartridge base to the ogive was 2.305 inches and in order to be on the safe side we were going to trim off five thousandths to 2.30 inches. So we're going to load 10 five shot groups and we're going to step down three one thousandths of an inch increments for each of those so that we get a little bit further away from the lens by three thousandths of an inch each time. So we're going to have seating depths at 2.297, 2.294, 2.291, etc., coming down three thousandths increments. To 2.270. If you take that and measure that distance off of the 2.305 starting point, we end up with ogive to lands at 8 one thousandths, 11 thousandths, 14, 17, 20, 23, 26, 29, 32, and 35 one thousandths off of the lands. We will shoot these, we will load these to these lengths, and since the bullet lengths are different, we're going to measure off of the ogive and not off the overall cartridge length. The overall cartridge length will vary, but that's irrelevant because we're going to be measuring the distance from the beginning of the ogive to the lens. Okay, so I have my 6.5 Creedmoor bullet seating die set up on the press along with the correct shell holder. I've added the bullet comparator to my caliper and I have the cases all charged with powder and I have them labeled for the cartridge base to ogive that we need to measure for 2.297, 2.294, etc. down to 2.270. So we're going to start off. I have backed off of the seating plug somewhat to make sure we don't overseat on our first bullet. I'm taking the bullets and I'm going to spread these out on a towel in front of me. Make them a little easier to pick up and keep them from rolling off of the bench. These will all be turned the same way so I don't have to fumble with them. And if I happen to have missed one, that will be okay. I think we'll survive. Okay. So I'm going to take my first bullet, put it in the shell holder, insert the bullet. And it looks like we need to go a little further. So we're at 2.334. So we've got a ways to come down. So I'm going to give seating plug a little turn check again two point 
2.231. Come down a little more. Two point two nine seven and a half. That's close enough. We're going to run with that. Looks like there's enough to get a good grip on it there. But we are just about right up on those lens. Two point two nine seven five still on the money. All right, so we have all fifty rounds loaded to length. So we're ready to load those up, take them to the range and see which ones are going to perform best. Okay, so what we're about to shoot, we've done our load development on our 6.5 Creedmoor at 40.7 grains of Hodgkin's H4350 powder. Should uh, produce a velocity of about 2644 feet per second according to the Hornady manual. And we are experimenting today with seating depths. We have cartridges which are loaded from seven thousandths off of the lands and three thousandth increments to thirty-five thousandth off of the lands, starting with the closest at target number one, ending up thirty-five thousandths is the last target. All right, so let's get going. We're shooting these at a hundred yards. You're welcome to enjoy the music while I fast forward through my shooting or you can fast forward to the end of the video to see the results. All right, let's bring them in and take a look. Okay, so it looks like number five and number six are my tightest groups. Those are 20 and 23 thousandths off of the lands. Oddly, if I'm not mistaken, this is about where the recommended overall length of the cartridge falls at 2.8 inches. So we take these home, we'll measure them, we'll see how they compare. But it definitely looks like we have a winner right here between 20 and 23 thousandths off of the lands. Here are the results of my seeding depth test. Shooting 140 grain Sierra Match Kings with a 6.5 Creedmoor at 100 yards. We were using 40.7 grains of H4350 powder, which produced an estimated velocity of just under 2,650 feet per second. So we had 10 five-shot groups loaded, 
with steps starting at eight one thousandths off of the lands and then going in three one thousandth increments to eleven thousandths, 14, 17, 20, 23, 26, 29, 32, and 35 thousandths off of the lands. The thing that I thought was very interesting about this was that the best groups of the day were at 20 and 23 thousandths off of the lands. Now, we were measuring from the cartridge base to ogive, not the overall case length, but I did go back and I took a look at the rounds that I was shooting. And for each one of those, I measured those, the overall length, and I averaged those out. Now, as I showed in the video earlier, all of these bullets are not the same length. We did just a random sampling of maybe five or six bullets, and we found that there was as much as six and a half thousandths of difference in length from one to the next, just from sampling five or six different rounds out of that box. So there is some variation in the overall length of the cartridges because of that. But when we were seeding these, we were seeding based on the cartridge based to ogive and i use the uh, comparator set to measure that distance to make sure i was getting that correct so on our first group at eight thousandths off we had an overall extreme spread of 1.91 inches not very good at all for my 6.5 creedmoor the second group was eleven thousandths off of the lens and we had a group of 1.9 inches. As we moved a little further back, the groups tightened up a little bit. So at 14 thousandths off, we had a group of 1.17. At 17 thousandths off, we had a group of 1.3. Now what's interesting here is that the distance here to the lens was 20 thousandths and 23 thousandths on these two, but the Average, when you average the overall case length, those measured 2.802 and 2.802. .802. Those were the averages. But here on the 140 grain boat tail hollow point match, you can see that the cartridge overall length recommended is 2.8 inches. And so it's, I just found it fascinating that we talk a lot about seating depth and adjusting seating depth, but the best groups of the day were right at that recommended overall cartridge length, and they averaged just about two thousandths over that. But those were my best groups of the day. So that's probably what I'm going to stick with as far as uh, future loading for this particular bullet. At um, 26 off the lens, we had an overall group size of 1.08. At 0.29 off the lens, we had an overall group size of 0.83. At 32 thousandths off, we had a group size of 0.93. And at 35 thousandths off, we had a group of 1.13. It's also interesting to note, too, that as you get further away from the lens, that overall cartridge length gets shorter because here we were at 2.802, then it drops to 2.798, 2.795, 2.791, 2.789. So in any event, the takeaway here is that it appears that, at least for my rifle, the recommended overall cartridge length produces the best results, and that's at 2.8 inches. So I will be loading that in the future. But that did give us groups of 0.68 inches and 0.56 inches. So in any event, those are my results from this test. Thank you for taking time to watch. If you have an idea or a thought, please be sure and leave a comment below. Also, please remember to like and subscribe. And thanks again for watching.